Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, January 16th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Uh, Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, if you length, episode number 632. And we have with us the lovely and talented Mr. Angelini Cook. Yay! Yay! Wee! Woohoo! <laughs> and it's that time again for another landscape and relationships episode. Gary, what specifically are we talking about today? Well, it's a new year, you know, and so people usually at this time of year tend to make expectations of themselves that they may or may not hold fast to over the course of the year so uh edward we're going to have a conversation i think about goals and accountability yes um this is probably something that i talk about all the time um (laughs) for a second i thought you were going to say all damn day (laughs) i mean yeah that too (laughs) Uh, so so it's something that, uh, I enjoy talking about. Um, I have a lot of really cool analogies for how I like to talk about, um, setting goals and being accountable. Um, and I think it's a good way to just kind of start the year. Um, so, uh, just to kind of throw some personal flair into there, (laughs) Uh, it is also something that I apply to my daily life and have found a lot of success, um, especially these past two years. Um, so, so yeah. Um, so I know that we have talked about, um, or I have mentioned this, uh, therapeutic model that I like to use a lot called, um, acceptance and commitment therapy. Um, And one of the, uh, or two of the domains with uh, acceptance and commitment therapy, also known as ACT, is uh, valued living and uh, committed action. And when used, like, at the same time, um, we can use these uh, in order to set goals and to practice accountability. Um, So... Hmm. It is kind of important to know the difference between values and goals. Um, so I have included a video by one of my, uh, one of like a, a really premier author on ACT. Um, he writes a book called The Happiness Trap and other books um, uh, about the difference. And one of the things that he talks about are that values are kind of like directions on a map. Um, like north, south, east, and west. And I think we've, we've talked about this on, a, um, on the podcast before. And goals are kind of like the uh, destinations on the map. So like, um, like if we were all to take a trip to California, what direction would we have to go? West. We'd have to go west, right? So that would be our value. Our value would be going west, right? So how would we know that we're going in the right direction? So I'm going to get in my car, and I'm going to go pick up Gary. um, And then we're going to go pick up Damon. uh, And then um, we're going to go to Texas to pick up 
um, Jeff, and then we're probably going to hit like what's what 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 are we gonna how are we gonna know that we're headed to California after we pick up Jeff? Uh, well, we do need to make a uh, uh, a slight left turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say we just head to the big hole in the ground. So Grand Canyon, there, but don't go in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, Nevada? Yeah, I would say Nevada. Uh, Nevada so, like, if we're going directly so, to, to California, we would go through New Mexico and, and Arizona, and we could hit, hit California. We don't even have to go up to Nevada, because that's a little north. All right, so <laughs> we start seeing signs for, for those states, right? So we know that we're headed in the right direction. Yes. If we Bye. start seeing, If we start seeing signs for Louisiana or... Uh, Alabama. You know, Alabama. Um, are we going in the right direction? No. No, absolutely no. not. Right. So we're we're not we're not living in uh, we're not practicing that value. So <laughs> um, the other thing to remember about values is that they will always um, there will there's never a end to that value. There will there's never a end point. Um, like if we think about uh, like heading to California. Um, once we get to California, can we still go west? I mean, yeah. is Siri technically yes, but not in the car by your meaning? No. Well, no, you probably could put your car on a floating, like bar you know, on a on a ship, something, and then just keep traveling along. Exactly, right? So, like, there will always be a west, right? Just as long as there will always be a north, there will always be an east, there will always be a south. Wait, we'll go west to get to the far different. east. right? And Got if it. you go exactly. west long enough, you'll end up on the east. Isn't that yep. bizarre? So, that, that, that's the around. thing when going in a circle. <laughs> I thought it was flat. Oh. Oh. Oh, honey, please. <laughs> Um, all right, so, so yeah, so values are always in that direction, but just like, uh, you know, the values that we live by, right. Um, like our values are always, um, like there's never an end to it, right? Like we can never be at honesty. We can never be at humility, right? Like there is always, um, a direction that we can head in. Um, yeah. so with with this right um sometimes when when people are setting goals right they um kind of do it backwards right sometimes they shoot for the goal first um and i suggest that we look okay so before we know the destination we have to know what direction we're headed so mm -hmm. um i suggest that we know well what values what road are we going to take um, so another analogy that I like to use is, uh, the Lord of the Rings. Um, so how many people are familiar with the traveling song in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit? Hmm. Anybody? I don't know it off the top of my head. All right. Well, Bilbo... <laughs> Um, had a song that he sang um, that Frodo also sang uh, in the Lord of the Rings. Um, and uh, this was, I'm going to read um, the portion of it that Bilbo um, recited before he left um, Hobbiton, or before he left the Shire to go to Rivendell um, in, the, in the Fellowship of the Ring. So he said that, the, the road goes ever on and on, uh, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead, the road has gone, and I must follow if I can, pursuing it with eager feet until it joins some larger way where many paths and errands meet, and whither then I cannot say. So the value in this, um, with this is the road, right? So the road is the the road is the way. That's the mm -hmm. that's the direction that we're headed, mm -hmm. uh, and it it's going to have a lot of different directions, right? Um, we just need to know what direction that we're headed. So, okay. um, 
so uh that all kind of makes sense yeah okay so far i mean yeah all right cool how many values do you think there are oh gosh uh uh infinity there's a bunch of there's a bunch of values right true um yeah so in order to do that usually when i'm talking to one of my clients um i usually provide them with a list of values um so i have included a link to a list of values Mm. so these are just a, a healthy resource you know think about it like kind of like your compass um and what we can do is we can look at this list of values and we have four different um areas on the map that we can go okay okay we can go in the direction of work and education we can go in the direction of relationships we can go in the direction of leisure and we can go in the direction of uh personal health and wellness Okay. All right. Each of those directions, um, do you think you're going to use all the same values for each of these um, areas of the of the map? No. Yes. No. Because. Wait. (laughs) (laughs) No, like we're not because. like the these areas of the map are going to have different terrain and there are going to be there are going to be things that we want in this specific part of the map um and we're going to to want to take a different road um in order to get the things that we want to get right so like um you know as far as work and education um i may really value dedication um uh you know, hard work, you know, um, Uh like, you know, rigorous, you know, whatever, um, Uh where for like leisure, those are not going to be the values that I want Uh in leisure. I want relaxation. I want, you know, I want serenity. I want peace. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this list of the values. It's very interesting. There's over a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Just as a quick reference, when you were like, how many are there? And I was like, uh, a dozen, maybe more. <laughs> there are, I, there list, I was like, oh. That's yeah. Lot. So there are a bunch of different roads that you can take. Um, oh, excuse me. So my, um, what I tell people is um, with these four different domains, pick three that are going to be your guiding roads um they're going to be the main roads in that area of the map for you right those are the things that are the most important for you in that area right all right um and if you even have to um start you can even do like a just give me 10 then from that give me five and then from that give me three Mm. right um if if you know because sometimes it could be overwhelming Mm. um so then right um from there we are going to think about if i'm if if i'm on these roads what are the things that i want to see on this road okay I'm just trying to think. <clears throat> and that's where the goals come up, right? So like, you know, when yeah. we were talking about our when we were talking about our trip to California, right? Think about it, we're taking a trip to Mordor, right? Only maybe it's not so treacherous. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but like what are the destinations that we want to um, reach to let us know that we're headed in that direction, right? So, like for me, um, as far as personal health and wellness goes, right? You all know that I'm uh, trying to get the surgery uh, for my hernia. So, in order to yeah. do that, 
I needed to lose like 50 pounds. Um, so, uh, that means that like I had to do something, (laughs) right? So like, I knew, I knew that like, if I'm on this road and, um, the, the values that are really important to me are going to be dedication, um, hard work, uh, and, uh, fitness, right. Say, um, Mm -hmm. I know that like, I'm going to be headed in the right direction when I see the numbers on the scale, um, headed in, in the, in the direction that he needed to, I know that, um, I'm going to be eating a different diet. Um, I know that I'm going to be um, feeling better. Um, I know that you know there's a lot of indications that I'm headed in the right direction, right? I'm making mm-hmm. my I'm making my doctor's appointments, right? Um, mm. So those are indications that I'm headed in the right direction towards that um, that ultimate goal. Um, so. Within that, um, when we're thinking about goals, it's important that we have um, what I have. We all heard of or have I talked about what SMART goals are? I don't know if you have. I don't know if you have, Ed. We it's been talked about a lot in my work, so I'm I'm already like has been put in front of me before, but. Um, yeah, I don't know if we discussed it on the podcast. Well, um, find out here in a moment. Yeah, so when we're talking about like what smart means, um, that means that the the goals, right, the destinations on this map that we um, are setting for ourselves uh, can be specific, right? So, like, uh, you know, it is a realized thing, right? So, like, you know, let's take this. Uh, personal wellness goal, right? So, like, I knew that I needed to get to 225 pounds. That is a specific goal. Um, meaningful, right? So, like, a meaningful goal means that, like, um, is this in line with my values, right? So, like, yes, if I get to 225 pounds, I am headed in the direction of fitness, hard work, and um, and wellness, right? Um, a, like, so for a, for adaptive, um, that is, um, what is, is it moving me in the direction, um, that I believe that I want to go in order to improve my quality of life? Yes. Um, I can say that that would be, Fair. um, is it realistic? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that I find with um, maybe my clients, maybe even with myself, I may set some goals that may not be realistic, right? They may be um, like things that I long for, not things that I desire, meaning that like uh, they may, I may not be able to get them. Um, and so I have to make sure that the things that I am putting in front of me are things that are obtainable. Um, So can I get to 225? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Oh, here, so here's the, uh, here's another example. When I started on this journey, they suggested that I do um, weight loss surgery. And I said, you know, I appreciate that suggestion. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. How, however, um, I think that I can. I would like to try to do this um, on my own um, without that intervention first. So that would be a good gauge of is that realistic, right? Like, do I have evidence that I can lose weight on my own, or um, have I tried this before and this has failed? Um, mm. You know, and that is where we would we would want to have those conversations of weight loss surgery. Um, where that would be more realistic, but, um, but yeah, so that would be an example of realistic and then time framed, right? So like, we want to make sure that, um, the goal that we're setting has a time frame, right? So like in like for this one in six months, I wanted to have lost 50 pounds. Um, mm. re- realistically that was possible. 
Um, and, uh, and I did it right. So, um, so there's that, but then also if I were to say, I want to lose 50 pounds in two months, that's not really realistic without other, some other kind of inter- intervention. Something, yeah. <laughs> right. Something um, drastic so. would have to have, ha- would have to happen for that to be a realistic goal. Exactly. Um, so when we're talking about goals, right, so that's kind of the framework that we use for, uh, for making goals. Um, and then as far as, um, the, the steps go, uh, goals are a journey, right? Um, so think about it kind of like a trip to California, right? With a beginning, middle and an end, right? So we're going to have an immediate goal. We're going to have a short-term goal, um, a a medium-term goal, and a long-term goal. Okay. Um, So with this being 2022, right? Think about it like this is a year, right? So immediate is like right now. Short-term would be this month, maybe into February, medium term, medium term goal would be about June, uh, about June, right? And then long term goal would be the end of December into 2023, right? Okay, yeah, makes sense. So, yeah, so that's kind of the the time frame when we're talking about goals. Um, so I know that I plowed through that, but there was a reason for that. Um, because when we're talking about accountability, this is where I think the meat of what I want to kind of talk about is, um, what happens when we set new year's resolutions? (laughs) Uh, nothing very good. Sometimes, sometimes you can set them and follow them and and meet your goals but it's rare that that happens you usually fail i think given what you've discussed so far ed what it comes down to is is that a a new year's resolution is a long-term goal and that's all it is and so what's missing is the scaffolding or the support structure to meet the long-term goal so it's like oh i'm gonna lose weight this year it's like, okay, well, that's kind of a nebulous long-term goal, but it's like, what are you, what are you doing to assure that you're going to kind of work towards that? Because what I'm seeing is like immediate, short, medium, like those are projections and things to work towards over time as opposed to, you know, saying, oh, I'm just going to like, you know, even if you were to say as a New Year's resolution, like I'm going to lose 52 pounds. Okay. Sounds arbitrary, but if you think about it, like, okay, there's 52 weeks in the year. So on average, I want to lose a pound a week. Um, So that that little bit there helps fill in about short term, maybe possibly medium term, something to, like, keep you on track, so to speak. Yeah. um, The other thing with that, though, is it's not connected with values at all. Um, And that's Mm -hmm. just you're just setting you're just setting. I want to be in this place. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. well. Where is that, <laughs> right? What direction are we headed? Um, mm. The other thing is I caution people against making what what is called dead person goals. Um, so don't, uh, I hesitate people against making goals that a dead person can do better than they can. A dead person can lose weight faster than you can. A dead person can stop smoking faster than you can. A dead person can do a lot of things faster than we can. So, like the a frame of reference when setting goals is, um, we want to make living goals. That is adding something to our life that, like action, right? Um, mm. Not taking something away, adding something to our life um, that is, um, you know. So, like some guiding questions I will ask is. If you were to, if like, if our, um, if what we do is successful, um, how, what actions are you going to be doing differently than you are right now? Mm. What behaviors will be different? How will you be treating people differently? 
Um, how will you be treating yourself differently? Um, what, what behaviors will you be doing today rather than what will you, um, you know, instead of like, I'm going to stop smoking, it's, I'm going to start yoga. I'm going to start like, that's how I stopped smoking was I started taking voice lessons again. Um, because I knew that if I, um, just stopped smoking, my failure rate was really high. I needed to do something to, to work towards, not away from. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that can be like a, that can be a, um, an indication that we're headed in the right direction. Like, um, I haven't used uh, substances in a while. Um, I haven't, um, you know, um, I've lost 20 pounds. That can be an indication that we're headed in the right direction. Um, but that isn't something that I would say, let's shoot for that. So, like, I guess mm-hmm. for example is, I want this surgery. Well, in order to get this surgery, I have to lose weight. Well, okay, the behaviors that I have to do in order to make that happen are I have to take this medication. I have to exercise. I have to, or, you know, I don't have to, I get to. Um, I, um, I'm going to eat differently. Um, all of these things, right? And the result of those behaviors are that the weight will come off. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Curious, sir. Curious, sir. Yeah. Yeah. My head, there's, there's many wheels turning in my head, and I'm trying to pinpoint a, a, a thought. I'm trying to get the thought, and it's not, there's too many wheels running. <laughs> I hear you. Um, the other thing when it comes to New Year's resolutions are that um, a lot of times uh, you are, uh, they are kind of doomed to fail um, because there's no accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing saying that, um, there's no like, so in acting, right, um, when you're doing a scene with somebody, Um, A director will say uh, the stakes aren't high enough, right? Because the Mm -hmm. the purpose of of acting is there's something that you want um, from the other person, from the audience, from from something, right? And you have to get that thing. So, Mm -hmm. you know, so sometimes the, the question from the director is the stakes aren't high enough. You don't want this. You don't want this enough, right? So with Fair. Um, with New Year's resolutions, it's I feel like I'm supposed to set this <laughs> thing um, mm-hmm. because it's the beginning of the year. Um, so there's no really drive. There's no motivation to do it. Um, so a lot of that's why a lot of times you hear uh, at the gyms that they're really busy for January. But then, you know, I guarantee you that uh, in February, mm. I'm going to be. By myself, yeah. On that row of, row of ellipticals. Yeah, it's been it, the thing that usually happens for me. I stopped doing use resolutions. I want to say years ago, and the main reason was because I knew I would, it, I wouldn't, I I would usually you know fail at them. I wouldn't set them, so I tried to say, I'm going to set some. Instead of resolution, I tried the first thing I started to say is like, I'm gonna to try to set goals. Like, I'm gonna to try to do this and and this and this, and this would be my thing. And I tried that for a little while. And no, um, because to me in reality it was kind of the same thing. It just was a different paint. If that makes sense. Like instead of using resolution, I just glossed over and wrote goals. Same over. thing, different so, word. Yeah, exactly. Synonymous. So Right. And, and what I was thinking about, David, as you were talking, is I was like, well, because it sounds like it's still um, like I was talking about, it doesn't have a value behind it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly. I was doing it because no you were, want. 
I was good at because that's what you're that's what you're always told to do. Mm. If that makes sense, like this was the thing. Like every year when you get it, it's a hit. It's a new year, so new year, new me. I'm gonna do these new things, and that's what I'm gonna do because that's what I kind of am supposed to do. But that's not really why you need to do them or why you need to set them. It's okay to set these resolutions and I have no problem with those that do. Um, but as you've kind of been saying is what's been going on is that I or I or many, I think don't have anything behind it. It's fluff. Mm-hmm. It's empty. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, always have so it needs to have something behind it some substance behind it in order to make it doable yeah workable yeah yeah i like, think yeah like i like i can say that i want to go to disney world like i said for years i want to go to disney world i want to go to disney world i want to go to disney mm-hmm. world like that's the goal that's the goal that's the goal mhm but I didn't go until uh, it was my 40th birthday. And I was like, I want to go for my 40th birthday. That's important to me. Mm-hmm. I think that's very, yeah. That's, and that's what makes, this makes, makes it make sense. Yeah. It needs, it needs to have a why. Have a why. You know, and, and that why I think needs to be more than just because. Well, right. And I think the thing that is, it's been part of the, the most recent discussion about New Year's resolutions is often people are talking about a destination, like a like mm-hmm. a achievement. And what I hear more often than not is that a lot of people are saying, actually, I'm I'm changing it. Like it's not about this, it's about I resolve to, which is about an action, which is different. So it's like I resolve to eat healthier or drink more water, like things mm-hmm. things that are more action based as opposed to just the specific, um, yeah. you know. Which is yeah. which I mean, it's still all kind of nebulous in a way until you get more concrete. And I think that's the the thing that Ed's revealing is like, but you still need to have values driving your decision making process, mm-hmm. like what it is that you're trying to achieve. Otherwise, it's like because really what it comes down to is, is um I used to ascribe to this thing that I had um learned when I was in corporate training was like always ask why and a minimum of three times in a row. So mm-hmm. like when you start something, you know, it's like why? And then you ask again why? Because usually the first why is on the surface. So it's it's kind of like this, like, you know, it's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm hungry. Why? <laughs> well, because I just saw, you know, this advertisement on YouTube. Why? Because I'm, you know, sitting and, and watching something, you know, and not necessarily being engaged. Do you know what I mean? Like, so it, it takes a couple mm-hmm, of times mm-hmm. to really get a little bit deeper into whatever that is. Um, but that's that's a lot of that little bit that I just mm-hmm. talked about is a lot of practice, like yeah. to think deeper about what motivations are and what's happening, because it's more about are you being emotionally driven or logically driven in the moment? You know, like what's your what is the motivation of your your thought process, those kind of things. But anyways, um, so I, I think that folks tend to not necessarily get that deep. And I agree with you. Like, I think there's a lot around the end of the year, the beginning of the year, people are like, you know, I'm going to do these things. Something that you said, Damon, stood out to me that I wanted to make a comment on was you were like, you know, oh, new year, new me. And there's a part of me that's like, what's wrong with you now? Why, why you got to be new? You know, like, like, (laughs) (laughs) Um, right. It's a fact. Like, like, (laughs) why can't you just be a better you? Mm-hmm. Why do you have to be new? Like what what's mm-hmm. what's what's going on that the old you, <laughs> the current you is a problem? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, and what's what wrong I think with it, you. Right. What, what <laughs> <laughs> that's, a other, that's a whole other question. That could be a whole series. Um, <laughs> what's wrong with you? So no, I, I think that you know the what it comes down to is, oh, how do I 
how do I feel better? How do I feel happier? Mm -hmm. Or less blah, less sad, mm -hmm. less depressed, less what, you know what I mean? Like it's about shifting and moving towards something, I think, as opposed to, you know, yeah. um, specific. And so when it comes to, to goals, like I think what, you know, you're saying it is, you know, there's, there's a, you're far more successful if you think about the direction and what's going to drive that and, and kind of, you know, keep you on track, so to speak, as you go along, as opposed to just a random, you know, I'm going to eat four to five portions of servings of fruits and vegetables every single day. Okay. Yeah. Why? Yeah. That's nice. Um, well, uh, Gary, one of the things that you brought up, and I think this kind of goes into another direction but it, 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 it what you just said about like i want to be less sad or i want to i want to feel you know whatever that i had like this reaction of like well what are you avoiding um like why mm. why don't you want to why don't you want to feel sad um well this is <laughs> now i'm putting on my therapist hat but uh, <laughs> i i think that uh, a lot of times we become uh avoidance like we run away from things right like we feel uncomfortable so we run right like that whole new year new me um can be well i don't like where i'm at right now um i need to do something else right um so i'm going to do all these other things instead of deal with the thing that i have going on right now um which is the fact that i'm whatever <laughs> right um yeah and I think that can be that can be a problem, um, yeah. Yeah, like which were, is like well, kind of like what Garrett was saying, like the new, like the whole new year, new me thing. Like, like, oh, I hated myself last year, so I'm just why? gonna. Yeah, that's a good question, but I, not, not, I'm not saying me personally. Just sure. Uh, <laughs> quotes. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, but I, I think, I mean, your point is yeah. well taken at about like you know. Um, is there a thing of avoidance? I, 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 when I was saying that, my thought was that people are recognizing that they feel stuck. Yeah. In, in a mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. be it sadness, depression, anxiety, whatever that is. Those were examples I was throwing out. So I don't think it's about, it's about avoidance. I think it's a desire to change. Yeah. And, and then how do you go about that? Um, but yeah, it gets yeah. it gets pretty deep in terms of like you know the 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 background as to how that is because I agree you know if like as Dave was saying it's like you know New Year New Me and it's like well what's wrong with all of you no well because you know I felt you know like crap this past year okay why no I didn't want to no I didn't want to do that I don't want to do yeah. that right well because so, you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna turn myself around I'm gonna do something completely different that I've never done before why. Because New Year, New Me. <laughs> Which does kind of, well, that does go back to that point, though. Like, that 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 circular logic is is kind of avoidance, though. It's like. Mm -hmm. it, I'm not going to deal with their problem. <laughs> well, right. It's like, are you going to take responsibility for what happened in the past year as to why you felt that way? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Well, like, I'm just going to do so this whole new thing. <laughs> um all right so here's me getting a little vulnerable um so you know i'm about to get this phd um what the fuck do i do then um i believe you put on a fancy shiny satin looking dressy thing with a hat and a tassel and you get congratulated for that achievement you get a piece and, of then, paper and then you take the tassel and you move it to the <laughs> other side and then you wait until the damn piece of paper arrives in the mail, and then you frame it and you put it up on your damn wall, and, you're, and then you take pride in it. Right. For so many people who are like myself, right, um, this has been my life for like 12 years, mm -hmm. and it's ending. And like, there's a part of me that goes, oh, <laughs> What, Seriously, what, what, what do I do <laughs> now? And but then also, like, was I running away from something? Like this whole time, like, what, like, 
Like, why was I doing this? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, who is I doing this for? Um, And so these are the things that are going on in my head. Also, the reason why I am reading The Lord of the Rings as I finish this dissertation, because I think it's really easy for people to get to not be grounded in the things that they're doing. um, And they don't realize that, like, like they're doing it for themselves. (laughs) Right? Um, Like, you know, why, why do you do the things that you do? Oh, I don't know. Well, give me a reason. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And, and yeah. that can be really difficult and really, you know, so as I come up on this, like, I'm like, no, 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 I'm doing this for me because I want to do this, not because somebody else told me to, or not because I think that it's going to give me something, right? Like, cause, And that's the other thing that people say is, well, what will this give you? What will this get you? Like, will the, mm-hmm. you know, will you get a promotion, you know, whatever. And I'm like, I'm like, oh. I'll be a doctor. <laughs> like, He's a doctor. You get a title. Uh, like, people will look at it and you can say that I am doctor and they'll be like, oh, credentials. Right, I can like, trust you more because well, you have you have a doctorate. You studied this. You were you have all the information you need. I am currently a trainer at my work. Have I trained in training? No. Right, but I, I mean, like, there's something to be said for a title that is bestowed upon a person. Um, in, in reference to, you know, Ed, you were saying about, like, what does a PhD do for you? Well, I'm like, well, you know, it gives you a sense of satisfaction, a sense of fulfillment, accomplishment. <clears throat> in terms of the work that you do, one thing you could do, and I don't know if any of your clients listen to this show or watch it, so uh, please don't take this as, like, gospel. You could decide to increase your income because you now have achieved this certification. Um or you could go in a different direction with a career and possibly decide to, you know, help others through their process to make that achievement or, you know, go work at a, at a, you know, higher education facility, you know, mm-hmm. um, start your own practice with other, you know, uh, therapists. There, there, Who knows? There, are, there are lots of options. Yeah. yeah. And there's a belief and understanding that because you've gone up, done all this work, that the all these doors will suddenly open. That's not necessarily the case. And sometimes sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. And that's the right. what you know you will need to figure out for yourself is what you want to do um once all of this is done. But um as we've been kind of talking about it, the only person that can make that decision is you and the road goes on like Mm -hmm. this is not the end right like and that's that is um what i needed to tell myself is this is not the end (laughs) you know um this is just a stop in the direction of the values that i have set for myself 12 Mm -hmm. years ago right um so that is really helpful, right? But if I am just living goal directed, it's really mm-hmm. easy for me to go, okay, what the fuck now? Um, mm-hmm. But if I'm value directed, the road goes on, ever, yeah. ever on. Right. I think that's the, the key thing. Like what you're talking about is, I think a lot of people are like, I want to achieve this thing. And what you're talking about now and opening up with us is like, yeah. but then what? Like once you've achieved, what comes next and if you are being goal oriented and that's all you are then you lose sight of the fact that there's beyond Mm -hmm. like um parenting some people want to be parents and they're great at you know at being parents you will technically be a parent for a lifetime but there will come a point where you're you're no longer needed um i'm trying to think of the right way to say that like your your capacity to parent is going to diminish and Mm -hmm. um at least here in the u.s i find a lot of people tend to struggle with that like if they've if they've invested a lot of time and energy and then you know they haven't really prepared themselves for the transition then 
you know, where their offspring now are independent human beings, most likely adults, and then they leave. It's like, well, then now what? Mm -hmm. Where do I go? What happens? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, me, I was asked recently, it's like, well, what are you going to do when you retire? And I was like, I don't know. I hadn't really thought about it. Like, it, I've not been, that's not been a goal. It hasn't been, an, yeah. a, you know, a, it hasn't been something uh, you've thought about. Right. A thing for me, Um, you know, very openly, I've told some people, I was like, the past couple of years, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like four, wait, let me think. Five years ago, it was, I would have been given, giving you a such different answer about my, prospects and my concept and everything i was like but man the past handful of years have been you know tumultuous mm -hmm. and i don't just mean the pandemic prior to that mm -hmm. you know? so yeah that's that's a you know a whole thing that i think sometimes we kind of lose sight of um and it is about yeah. you know kind of like awareness and you know what i was trying to explain to people is like i used to have long-term goals i used to project i used to have a bigger picture and then that kind of all got shook up and changed and then especially the past two years, I was like, maybe I don't have time. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, you know, six months. That's about as far as my window is. Like, the, like you know, I can't be making plans and try to think that far ahead because it's just too volatile currently yeah. to make some other things. And I think perhaps the whole world is going through that. I think, you know, that that Agreed. the pandemic really did kind of shake things up for people and – um you know, I'm very curious to see in another year if we get some statistics out of economics in terms of like life savings and like if there's a big shift in priority. Because for quite a long time, I was hearing like people have got no money saved. They have no like they aren't thinking forward thinking about those plans and, and towards that kind of stuff if something were to happen. Well, something mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. Yep. Like, yeah, like the big like you um, some of the things for me, like I've since especially with the pandemic have kind of have really hit home. Um, retirement is not the big one. I have like a, you know, 401k and all that stuff set aside. I already know that part that's putting in, that's literally taking money from my, when I'm my paycheck and going somewhere that, and I don't touch it. So yay for that. But um, this pandemic in particular, the pandemic in particular made a lot of things shift and change for me uh, that I'm still dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I think both of us are not, but you know, um, cause I was furloughed and there knowing, you know, what I know now, there could have been a possibility that I did not have a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we know many people that probably had to deal with that during the pandemic that lost suddenly, mm -hmm. without warning, lost their job. So wild. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting because I remember when I started, when I went off to college, and originally my pursuit was to be a music educator. Uh, and I, that was my freshman year, and I almost flunked out. I'll explain that story another time or repeat it. Anyways, uh, I ended up shifting and I ended up going into hospitality management. And I remember my grandmother saying to me very pointedly, she goes, oh, she's like, that's a really good field. And I looked at her and I was like, really? She's like, yeah, people always need a place to sleep. They always need to be fed. Fast forward 2020, 2021, baby, you know what <laughs> industry really didn't do well? Uh -huh. <laughs> hospitality. <laughs> because while yes people need to be fed and they need a place to stay when the world shuts down they ain't going nowhere right ain't nobody going nowhere so they don't need a place to stay and in terms of like you know being fed that was all upended you know it was sourdough starters was the thing mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, you know, the like, you know, the world had to be like, oh, we get we need to reassess. Like, you know, we saw this like, let's commute to get back to back to the earth and back to, the, you know, the way our grandparents and, uh, and you know, generations mm -hmm. did things. And it's like, well, you didn't ever have to really move away from that. We just got really in the here in the US, I should say, we got really addicted to convenience. Mm -hmm. um, and we're still paying the price of that now. You know, we're still seeing that the supply chain, you know, taken care of. Ooh. Yeah, so many things I can say to that, and I'm not going to. <laughs> so, um, and with that, you know, like, so Gary touched on 
uh, as far as goals go, sometimes our goals are just immediate goals. Mm-hmm. I just need to get through the next 24 hours because um, I don't have, um, I, I, you know, like, so I had a, a friend who just moved to Australia uh, and, you know, he was like, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> like, like things just change on the, uh, like, on the hour. Like, I'm like, yo, you just need, like, where are you right now? Um, think about the next thing. What is mm-hmm. the next thing? Worry about that. Um, and mm-hmm. then worry about the next thing, right? Because, um, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes it's, that's all we can do. Yeah. In some ways, it's sort of like survival. Mm-hmm. Like, what is, your, what is the, the, like, what are the things that you need to get done, like, right now to sustain yourself yep. for the next day? And the next day and the next, you know. Right. And I, and I think that's what the pandemic really did for people was it 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 put into perspective the hierarchy of needs. So mm-hmm. if you if you haven't had this like um, before. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs is basically this like uh, pyramid or triangle model that talks about like the the things that you um the items that you need to sur- to live, quote unquote, like to survive. And then there's beyond that. Like, this is a really simplistic mm. explanation. Um, it could get super in-depth. Uh, but basically, you know, it's like you you need to have shelter and you need to have sustenance. And, like, once you kind of have those things consistently, then you begin to look beyond that. And, like, you kind of keep moving up, so to speak, uh, to the higher levels. And, I mean, it's one of the things we deal with in public health. We talk about that all the time. Um you know, and and Ed, I'll want to talk to you about this at another time in the future. Like one of the things we're talking about a lot that I'm hearing is about trauma informed leadership. Um, this concept of like it used to be, unfortunately, especially in public health, the opinion was like, you know, we focused on one thing, and it's kind of like, you know, you keep putting yourself at risk to contract HIV. Like that's been the messaging in the field of work that that I've come into, and now they're like, but there's a lot more behind that. Like just like kind of figure wagging slightly. Do you know what I mean? Like, like why what's yeah, going on behaviorally these things are happening and it's like, Oh, maybe because they're, you know, doing sex work. No, nothing wrong with doing sex work. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, a, it's a way to make a living, but you know, if you're doing this and it's because, you know, you need to be able to, to have a shelter, you know, and sustenance in these things. And, you know, there's a big difference between like doing it and having it as a reliable income source versus like a roller coaster of like, where am I going to sleep today? And, yep. you know, when am I going to eat? And so, you know, there's there's so much stuff that can go into like why people make the decisions that they do. Um, it work towards that. And so the concepts of like goals and and um, and being accountable to them, that could be beyond someone's like immediate understanding. Like they they and that's one of the things that I've been learning that not everyone necessarily has the scope or concept of. Um, and that's a little challenging to work in this field because um, I think there's generation generationally some different concepts. Um, I'm finding that people that are my age and younger um, in these generations are much more open to understanding and taking into account a bigger picture as opposed to, I think older generations are much more focused on um, like, let's say, you know, you're going to quit smoking and it's like, well, you, you need to quit smoking. It's like, well, that's fine. But you can't like you just don't quit. Do you know what I mean? Like like there's so much mm-hmm. more into that. Um, you know, there's the whole addictive quality to things. There's behavioral coping mechanism. You know what I mean? Like it, it goes on and on. And so I think it's all about like a shifting of a mindset. Um, and so the bigger you know point is when you're going to look at something, realize that there's a lot going into that and don't feel overwhelmed about it. I think it's the importance of like all these different versions of goals, immediate, short, medium, long term, like take each day as it comes. And that's a big thing. I think of the pandemic uh, really kind of taught a lot of folks is, you know, 
Mm-hmm. This is this is what I have a bandwidth for, you know, and that's why even I kind of still do that now. You know, I look at things on a week to week basis, maybe month to month um, and a little bit. But it's I think it's just difficult because of the shifting sand of of the general public health. Um, people want to go back to normal. But what I think nobody's really understanding is that there isn't going to be a back to. It's all just different. This is normal. Well, I think it's the current normal. I'm hoping for a new normal, quote unquote, in which we find um, that this turns into more like it's never going to go away. It's not going to be eradicated, at least not in the near future. And so it's about adapting to whatever that is and how we address that. So. You know, it's like, okay, maybe this summer we can see a lot more comfort in terms of travel without restrictions and people will feel like they're getting a sense of like their personal freedom back. I think that's what a lot of people are fighting at this time is, Mm. you know, they're like, you know, that's one of the things I've been telling my coworkers, I think when I really saw a tangent, but, you know, people are pushing back on, you know, all these mandates and different things because we live in the land of the free. I can do what I want. Um, well, within reason, and we've gone so far, we've gone over 200 years. Do you know what I mean? Of just like progressively doing what we want as we want, when we want, and then to have the whole system kind of come like to a screeching halt almost, I think really shook a lot of people up and they just did not. I think we as a society failed to give our own like country persons the ability to cope. How do we address drastic change in a very short period of time? I come from a a decade and a half career in a field where we put out fires every single day, every single week, like 52 weeks a year. So I had very little difficulty with just pivoting and going in a different direction and being like, okay, this is where we go. But now we have an obstacle. Let's go around it. Let's do this thing. Let's problem solve. <laughs> That's part of my skills and my capacity. I am not everybody. And I think a, a vast number of people were like, wait, what? <laughs> like, you know, they just, <laughs> who the fuck pulled the emergency break? You know, like they just were yep. not ready. And it really, I think, broke people. And one of the ways that I think people feel empowered is to like take a stand and be like, don't tell me what to do. Like, mm-hmm. I have rights. I have freedoms. And it's like, well. Yes and no. Like, in a way, you kind of have some illusions of those things. But that's a, but that's a whole other issue. Um, <laughs> are you okay, David? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just having, like, I'm sitting here, like, having this, like, ooh, yeah. Mm, mm. Can't, can't audibly say, yeah, what, right. what, it, what the feelings are. Yeah. So so now that we're in 2022, I think this this particular episode, I realize we kind of got off topic for a bit. I think it's important because it's the beginning of a year and it's and we always for some reason, which is kind of ironic to me. The world is not new. You know, the planet that we're on, it keeps spinning, it keeps rotating, it keeps on its you know path. Mm-hmm. One day is nothing but another day. It is nothing but another rotation. And yet we as human beings, boy, do we like to have confinement. And so we create time. Time is a construct. Time isn't really a thing. It's just a way to, re- to relate things. So we say there are 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or 65 days in a year. And even then it's an imperfect system because every so many years we have to like make up time yeah. or account for more time because, you know, somehow. For some reason, even though it technically doesn't really exist, but whatever. Right. So, you know, we get to this thing called the new year. And my point is, everybody's like, oh, it's a new year. That's like, baby, it is nothing but another day. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one with me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You could, you could, you could start, you could start five minutes ago and you could start in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be January 1st. Exactly. Right, but I but I think we constructed it as human beings because it gives us an anchor, mm-hmm. and people need a need to be able to have a foundation, yep. and because we've 
because we moved away so much over centuries from our nomadic like existence to just kind of pick up and go or do whatever we we really shifted things and while it's great that you know we have conveniences and a lot of the conveniences are available to us because we stay rooted the downside is yes but that also kind of limits things Mm -hmm. and so we live in one of the most advanced times ever in our like human existence that we can we can practically do anything go anywhere um but you know it's a little difficult you know we're all part of the same similar generation i remember when i was really young the idea of traveling to go across the country that was a big freaking deal Mm-hmm. And like my, I remember my dad ended up saying something to me because like, as I was becoming a teenager, my parents have been divorced for a few years and my father said something about how I shouldn't take for granted the blessings that I had when I was younger. He didn't call them blessings, but he basically was like, you know, you, you had some, now we would say I had some privilege. Um, by the time I was a teenager, I had traveled to Florida a half dozen times. I had been to Disney. Mm-hmm. A lot of the kids I went to school with, that was not the case for them. Mm hmm. And so um, now, to Disney. maybe it's 2022. Mm-hmm. I'd go to Disney tomorrow if I wanted to. I mean, my pocketbook kind of says something different. <laughs> 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 the reality is the technology is there. The ability is there. Like I could just, you know, grab my passport and a couple of things, buy a ticket, get my ass to the airport, take a, take a you know, ride share, get on a plane, hopscotch, be in Orlando, house of mm-hmm. the mountains. Like uh, I, I, I can... almost, I, yeah, I almost did that um, for the the happily ever after um, the last fire. I I was this close, um, and I gave myself permission. I said I'm giving myself permission to go to that last fireworks, um, and mm-hmm. I ultimately I didn't, and I'm kind of glad that I didn't because it looked like it was a, um, a really packed mess. Uh, mm-hmm. but like i was like i can literally do this i'm yeah. the only one st- i i am the one making that decision which was wild to me mm-hmm. <laughs> so like I when a, i was yeah. and when i was in my 20s i remember um for those of you that don't know here's a little <laughs> here's a little like strange insight to my past when i was in my 20s i had this grandiose idea concept because i gotten on this train that i was going to become a motivational speaker i was going to become a empowerment guru i was going to be the next like author speaker of like you know chicken soup for the soul and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff um and so I had I had an opportunity to go to this workshop, this weekend workshop out in Anaheim, California. And the thing is, I didn't have you know any money saved up. And so I kind of ended up mentioning it to my great grandmother. And she's like, tell you what, I'll pay for your plane ticket. If you can if you can like pay for your um, admission, I'll pay for your plane ticket and I'll even pay for the hotel. Wow. And I will never forget this because I was flabbergasted that she would do that because I I wasn't asking for it. I think I had been kind of talking about this dream or this wish or whatever. And I remember her saying, I want you to have this experience because you need to learn that it's possible. Yeah. Mm. And so I did. And I went. It was very memorable. It was one of the first times I ever went to a gay bar that wasn't local. Um, <laughs> didn't hook up because I was too fucking scared. Uh, but but you went. But I went. I had an experience. I learned a bunch of stuff. Um, and it was a continuation of my life's journey to learn. Like you can dream and do things, um, and achieve them and work towards them. But you do have to set some goals, and you have to you have to know where you're going. Like you have to Mm -hmm. think about those things and and take it into account. And that's the, that's the thing I've like, this is me being vulnerable. This is the thing that I've been struggling with the past handful of years is I I lost all of that. Like it all just Mm. kind of went away. Like I, I, I have issues of regret 
I don't really like to think about that as great regret, but I like, I took a lot of things for granted. And then when, what I took for granted went away, it upended a whole bunch of stuff. And I was like, well, so fuck now what? Mm. So it really kind of shifted things and it made me think about stuff. And so now that we're moving into 2022, you know, I think it's good that we're talking about this concept of like values and how you turn them into goals. And like, you know, mm -hmm. you, you create these kind of concepts of achievement and milestones because I think we all, you know, have spent two years, um, you know, uh, possibly going into three, not very much, hopefully, um, you know, that, that are, we had to adapt and shift and kind of reprioritize. And I think that, you know, it's important that we see an emergence that people go back, not go back, but that they make new goals, um, yeah. mm -hmm. new priorities, new, whatever it is that they, that they want. And it could be anything. I mean, it could be personal. Like you were talking about it, you know, it could be personal. It could be work. It could, you know, be different stuff. You know, I'm, I'm this week going to be reaching two years at my new job. Awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. And some people at work are like, really? Two years? And the way they say it goes one of two directions. It's either, has it only been two years? <laughs> it's like, yes, bitch. It's only been two years. <laughs> it feels like more. And then other people are like, already? Mm -hmm. Like when they say like two years, and I'm like, right. Isn't that crazy? Like 24 months just flew by. Yeah. Um, and so... Like that, that's part of, you know, my whole perspective thing is looking at the stuff, you know, so now that I've got a job, technically two jobs, and those things are are settled, and I've got a rhythm, and I've kind of got a pattern, and I have some like, confidence through experience and repetition. Now I'm starting to focus on other things. I understand. Mm -hmm. Personal yeah. wellness, yeah. leisure, so on and so forth. So anyways, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so shifting into accountability, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that uh, I'm realizing that is one of my favorite parts of my job is I, um, we are all map makers. We are cartographers of our own lives. Um, and when people come to see me, they may not be, they may not have that pen to make their own map. Um, and one of the cool things is we, you know, let me give you this pen for you to make the start, you start to make this map that you want to set for your life, right? And, um, you know, Gary, one of the things that you talked about was trauma informed care. And, um, you know, as far as accountability is, we are ultimately responsible for our actions, um, period. Uh, but we're, but we're also not responsible for everything that has happened to us. Um, but we are responsible, like, you know, when you are sitting in front of me, like we are making a map that, that of our life that we would like to create right um so we um we are responsible for this like this this is important to us right um mm -hmm. and we get to be accountable um to the to the places that we are putting on this map for ourselves mm -hmm. and for the for the overall map that we are creating like it's ours like for the first time and so many of the people that I work with, um, it's, it's ours. It's not somebody else's. It's not our parents. It's not the States. It's not, um, societies. It's ours. Um, and that's really empowering our map. So like, um, one of the things that, uh, I like to be mindful of to remind people is that this map is going to include barriers. There are going to be hills. There are going to be mountains. <laughs> there are going to be like those drawings of blowing winds, right? And those <laughs> represent our feelings, um, different situations, our emotions, our urges. Um, 
memories are going to happen. And we have to make sure that we have all the needed resources that we need in order to um, handle those situations, right? So we need to have these, you know, coping skills. Um, We need to know what we need to know um, in order to go on this journey. And one of the other things is as we go, or so the other thing is um, with that is that's going to happen. Like that is an understood that will happen. Um, I'm not going to say that that's not going to happen. I can't say that mm-hmm. like that would like these things will happen. Um, so the other thing that's going to happen is we're going to want to avoid this. We're going to want to run away. We're going to want to hide. <laughs> we're going to want to do all of the things that we did do before we made this map that wasn't working. Um, so we have to be mindful of the times when we want to put the map down uh, and walk. Mm. Um, and also be mindful of the uh, the thought the thoughts that we have, uh, like the patterns that aren't helpful and that get us caught in you know the thicket um, and and just get us stuck, like what Gary was talking about. Um, so we have to be ready and willing, um, and it's not easy to be willing to be willing to address those patterns that we have created for however many years um fair that isn't easy um the other thing to remember is we can always change our course uh we can always choose a different path but at what and whose expense Mm. uh so i want to i want people to honor their values and their commitments so know your why. Mm. There's a reason why you are on this course. And if you choose a different course, which you totally can, you are responsible, you are responsible, you are accountable for that. But know that there is an expense to that. Sure. That why changes. Um, also, we're on this Lord of the Rings thing. Um, have a fellowship. Um, so I have this, um, weight loss thing. Um, I have two friends um, who, when I told them what was going on with my health, uh, they were like, okay, well, we're going to lose weight with you. Uh, we're going to do this with you. And we have a text group and we hold ourselves accountable. Um, you know, like we are synced up with our Apple watches and like <laughs> they have um, like they have been rock stars. They have, um, you know, like they have pushed me um, mm-hmm. and I push them and uh, and it's been it's been really great. Um, and then, you know, I have I've done this with other friends where we've sat down at the beginning of the year and we're like, what do we want to do? Like, which direction are we going? And like um, and that's been really helpful, especially with with me. I, I have so many things going on um, that sometimes I need other people in my life to be like, hey, what about that other thing that you said that you wanted to do? Oh, fuck. Thank you. I forgot about that thing. Um, so having that okay. like, shared accountability is really good. Having that fellowship um, is good. Uh, like we talked about creating the party, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so the other thing is guilt. Um, we're going to feel guilty at times. Um, good. If you're feeling guilty, you have values. Um, like, you know that there's a direction that you're headed and you're off track. Uh, remember that not all those who wander are lost. Um, keep going, right? Um, but maybe ask yourself, why am I wandering? Is there something mm-hmm. avoiding? 
Um, That's gonna be hard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I just just did, did, when you mentioned the guilt thing, I was like, that makes so much sense. It makes sense. Like you're gonna feel you you're gonna feel bad about bad about it or guilty about it, but that means it means more to you. Yeah. You know, everyone talks, everyone, you know, like weight loss is the big thing and we've kind of been talking about it, but like everyone talks about like, especially with weight loss, like, oh, I'm going to have, I'm going to give myself a cheat day and I'm going to have a day where I just do whatever, not whatever I want, but I'm going to like, I'm going to do these things. I'm going to have this like really awesome cheesecake because, you know, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's my cheat day. Like, I'm just going to do it and not care. Not, not necessarily not care, but like, I'm going to do it. Because I know I can, I can, I can, I've been really good so far. So let me just have this moment to like indulge. And then depending on a person, sometimes they immediately feel really bad afterwards. And the, usually the reason why is because they know that that was, it's kind of like you said, it's diverting them away from what they wanted to do. Now, if they don't necessarily feel as bad about it, then maybe this isn't the right goal for you. Then it's not Does a cheat day. Sense? Yeah, it's not a cheat day. It's, it's just Tuesday. It's just Tuesday. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, with that, uh, so the, the text group that I have with my friends is called Make Good Choices. Uh, and, you know, the good implies the value, make value choices, right? So, like, mm -hmm. if if I want, like, hi, I'm eating freaking Reese's peanut butter cups right now. Like, <laughs> I, I know that, like, um, you know, I have done really well today, right? Like, mm -hmm. I can eat that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm eating within my means. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still making good choices. Um, and uh, exactly. So the, the um, you know, like, there's that guilty pleasures um, mm -hmm. thing. What are, what are your guilty pleasures? I push back on that hard. They're not guilty pleasures. They're your fucking pleasures. <laughs> Why be guilty about the stuff that you like? Um, I have, I, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, just, just like what you like. Um, go in that direction. Um, for, well, for I, right. I think what it comes down to is just like being conscious of your decisions. And taking yeah, ownership of them. Right. Like in that moment. And so it's like. You know, sure. So you're going to have some candy. And you're going to have candy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, I think that's part of like where, I don't know, at least for our American society, I think there's just a lot of issue because yeah. we tend to make things so, um, I don't know, binary, like so, mm -hmm. so like good, bad. Yep. Yes, no, black, white. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and it's so, everything's so diametrically, like, got a, got a, a polar opposite. And I'm like, yeah, but does it have to? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, there is, within the ACT framework, there is, uh, you know, when you're evaluating your thought, or when you're looking at your thoughts, uh, ask yourself, are you, eva like, are your thoughts evaluative? Like, are they judge are they judgy right like mm. so are their words like good bad um mm. you know ugly are they judgy um be judgy. yeah um and also just remember that progress isn't always a straight line mm -hmm. that's a big one like that is yeah. that is a, like the guilty one is one, and then this one, this other one, this next one is is also true. Um, because yeah, it's never the worst part is like everyone talks about like point A, point B. No one talk. Everyone thinks that you just go doom, like and that's that's how it's supposed to always go because that's the way it's supposed to be. Yada 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 yada. But you don't, you can't always go this way. Well, I think what what there's a misnomer in that. I think there's an expectation that we want to take the straight path because it's the shortest and the quickest. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is like nothing, not nothing, almost nothing is a straight line. Mm -hmm. So here's so here's an example for all three of you as, as on this episode with me. 
if I asked you to get up and leave away and walk away from the camera and go straight to your toilet, your closest bathroom, Mm -hmm. how many of us can do that in a straight line? I can. Okay. Literally. Yeah. No, no deviation. So when you go, (laughs) so the toilet is right on the other side of that door. Yes. Like straight ahead. But it, but it's not the toilet I would use. I would. Um, I was just being difficult. <laughs> but there is a toilet right on the other side of that door. Right. Straight across yeah. from the door. Yes. Yeah. I hate bathrooms like that. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> I'm just not a fan of putting a door straight across from the toilet. Like, who does that? Um, <laughs> our, our, if, if I were upstairs... Like, I couldn't go straight from my, you know, bed to my toilet. But when I open the door, the toilet's right there. So you don't like bathrooms like that. That's your problem, Gary. I'm just not a fan of it. Because my thought <laughs> is, if the door opens. Someone's going to see you. Right. Like, I mean, I'm like. You're pooping? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But my point in this analogy was. Even in our own homes, you can't get mm-hmm. directly to any other destination point. You have to divert. You have to mm-hmm. – you, you take a, a, a path, but the path is not straight. So mm-hmm. for me, I would have to get up out of this room, go out through the door, into the hallway, and kind of almost make a, a U-turn. Because literally, for me to get to the toilet in my home, it is directly across it, – it, it is a straight line for me to it. The problem is I have furniture and a wall – in my way like mm-hmm. i can't get directly just there. get there yeah right. like I, if I, I have to go yeah. around the obstacles i'd have to go through two walls mm-hmm. Correct. And, a, and a and a hut that i don't want to get that i don't want to hurt because it's right. beautiful so <laughs> because we're all you know what is it because we're all corporeal as opposed mm-hmm. to non-corporeal like yeah we yes. just can't go through objects we have to go around them and that's the truth of our lives and i think that's interesting that, you know the people mm-hmm. we kind of i don't know we we don't think about that you know mm. like i don't you know ed, most people, yeah well ed was talking earlier about being our own cartographer like to make our own map so i think about like those classic movies where they like show the plane traveling from one destination of the globe to the other and it's do, sort do, of a straight do, line do, do. where it is straight line yeah. right but the but reality if, is, like, if you, you don't ever been on a plane, really do that. <laughs> they don't mm-hmm. go straight, right? Um, and also, it's like uh, in the video that I put in the beginning of this, he talks about like valued, um, like living by your values is about the process, not about the destination. Um, so, which is difficult (laughs) right like Mm -hmm. i'm you know i am you know with my dissertation right now um you know for the past couple of weeks i have been an anxious annie uh just like freaking out about these results that are in my um in my dissertation and like oh my god oh my god oh my god and my uh advisor's like girl (laughs) like stop like we're not going to not give you a PhD just because something didn't happen right. Um, this is about the process, not about the not about the results. Um, chill out. <laughs> Calm down, Mary. This sounds more to me like you had an expectation of the results. No, it's so it's it's um, kind of like. Uh, like when we talk about it, you know, a lot of getting the PhD is about the process of Mm -hmm. doing, of doing the, the, um, about doing the, the dissertation. Right. Um, but like I was really focused on the results of the dissertation that like, um, but like spoiler alert, everything's fine. I got statistical significance. Woo. Um, (laughs) But like some, the, there was a an issue that I had um, that I resolved by myself. Mind, mind you, uh, I didn't need anybody's help. I figured it out on my own. I totally felt like Bilbo Baggins when he killed the 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 spider without the help of 
Gandalf or the other dwarves. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god. Um, so I did that. I did that. Like, <laughs> technically, uh, uh, Bilbo is not a dwarf, so he can say the other dwarves. He would just be the dwarves. Anywho. Uh, anywho. <laughs> um, so. I was really just glommed onto the results and that, like, the fact that something wasn't right, um, that meant that, like, the world was ending or whatever, um, which it wasn't. And it was fine. And I just had to keep on reminding myself, this isn't about the results, Edward. (laughs) No, 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 no. This isn't about you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just clarifying. Cause you were making it very like you you centric. And I was like, but this isn't about you. Like I I love you so much and I appreciate that you were like so wound up, but but I was like, it's okay. It's okay. But in a way, like it's data. It's a thing. Well, yeah. So I'm glad that you right. But also, the, uh, one thing I wanted to say is you were talking about how you were able to do it by yourself. Like, congratulations. But I didn't doubt it. Oh, I sure the fuck did. <laughs> well, maybe you should look down more often and see the ruby slippers that you're wearing. You've always had the power. Oh, girl. Listen here, Glinda. Don't, don't, oh, girl me. <laughs> don't be dissing, don't be dissing my, my, like, my recognition of, like, your power all this time. Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. Hold on, and he makes some popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, the ruby slippers you got on your feet. You could have gone home. Shut mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a whole different feeling. That that's mm-hmm. that's separate when you're like salty. Right. You mean to tell me, yes, girl, but you weren't ready to hear that message yet. So yeah. Anyways. Point B yeah well i mean but also with that accountability piece that like sometimes you have to recognize that like you gotta fucking do the thing true right like you made the map mm-hmm. you can ask for help but like sometimes there may not be help available Mm-hmm. and sometimes right like the help isn't available because you don't need the help Exactly. You have mm-hmm. the ability to do it without the help. You just don't know that until yeah. you do it. Exactly. So grab your sting and kill that fucking spider or your ruby slippers. Or your I say mom. put on the slippers and grab sting because you got to look fabulous while you're doing it. You really do, though. Know. <laughs> anyway. Bilbo, Bilbo, you know that Bilbo was missing those ruby slippers. He wouldn't have fit. You know, J.R. Tolkien was like, that, <laughs> that L. Frank Baum yeah. stole my idea. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch done stole my look. No, sorry. <laughs> anyway. Well, fuck sorry. my drag. Yeah. That's okay. a different show. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, I I appreciated this very much. Um. The accountability part, I think, is the like you said, is one of the bigger things that I think we everyone needs to realize is that you're not going to be able to just do stuff. Like it does, you, you, no one is, no one is Superman, right? Like no one can do everything, yada yada yada. Like there, you can, you yes, you can set a goal and do all the things, but you can, you have to recognize that there's a possibility for failure or needing to re you know reexamine which way you're going so you know as we were kind of like joking earlier about like once we get to california could we still keep going west yes absolutely yeah, but you're going to have to find a different way than getting driving in the car. You can't just get in the car. It's just a logistical issue. Stay in the car. 
Yeah. 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 yeah you have to Just, figure out so you have to figure a different way. Like if you want if you want to go to like instead of just going to California, you want to go to Japan. Like you now have to figure out the way to get there. Now you know an obvious way is to get on a plane and go there, but you know, what if you live in an area where like there are no planes to Japan? Well, you're gonna probably have to go this way first, and you're gonna have to go back up because that's how things go. And then you're probably gonna have to go um east instead of west because that's sometimes how it works. Um right. But um yeah. It's it's not impossible, but you're gonna have to figure out figure out the way, and it may not be the same way. You might be driving, as I keep going back to. I like that perfect example, and that street that you normally take to get to where you always have gone is suddenly blocked. Maybe there was an accident. Maybe there was a. Maybe they're working on it, and construction is like shut it down for you know. The time you're driving. Well, you're going to have to figure out how to get around it. Yeah, there was a really cool meme um, where it was talking about self care, and self care is more than just one thing, right? So, like, we need to have like a, it was kind of like a rainbow of self care because mm. sometimes, like, the thing that we use for self care may not be an option. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and we need to be able to pick you know, um, something else. I think the example was like, go for a walk. Uh, what if you break your leg? (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. Then what are you going to do? Um, so have more than one way, uh, have more than one route recalculating. Mm -hmm. Right. And, And I think, so the, the biggest thing is like, there will be, there will be hazards or hurdles or challenges that come up. Hence the, the, it is not a straight line. You will go around, you will go over, you will go under, you will do something to get beyond that thing. And some of the time you will do it with other people. They will be your guide. They will be your confidant. They will assist you in in that, whatever that challenge is. But then there are other times that you may do it by yourself. And be your guide and your confidant. <laughs> and don't, don't be surprised at the accomplishment of doing it on your own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's solo. Sometimes it's with others. Yeah. Sometimes Absolutely. you need to find those people with the icons above their head in order to form your party. Sometimes you just need Discord. Sometimes you just need Skype. Sometimes you just need a messenger group. Sometimes you just need to give somebody a ringy ding. Sometimes you just need to walk down the hall. Or sometimes you just need to ask yourself, can I do this by myself? Do I need is this somebody a solo else duty this? I can do? Okay. Yeah. Is this a solo adventure? And if it is, am I up to the challenge? Am I willing to do that? Yeah. Um, and then like, you know, the last thing was I put in here a reference for, um, for relationship goals, um, and how to turn them into habits. Um, and you know, there wasn't really anything I wanted to say about that. Um, cause they are more in, uh, they reference are like some of the other landscape of relationship, mm-hmm. uh, episodes um but like you know if you have a goal of strengthening trust right uh, maybe we need to uh form a habit um of talking openly about your needs and your desires with your partner in order to build an emotional connection leading towards more trust um and then you know if our goal is to increase intimacy right again these are values right we need to pay more attention to our partners bids for emotional connection, right? Like how are they expressing um, intimacy and am I doing the same? Very cool. Good deal. Wow. Oh, you know what? Sounds like that's it. That's the end. There you go. Another great episode with Ed. Yeah. Appreciate you so much. 
I appreciate you too. Yeah. Anyways, play with contact us. Uh, let us know your thoughts about this uh, or any episode by popping over to our website, cubsoutloud.com. She didn't see email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 we'll talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place, the URL. You can join our entourage chat by going to tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col or uh, subscribe to our Google calendars to find out when we're recording these episodes. Find that at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Get some various accoutrements such as it comes out loud t-shirt, a hat, a consent is my foreplay shirt, which by the way is designed by Smashy. You can find more of his designs over at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, which we've gotten a new patron recently. And uh, you can also just send us cash by going to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on various uh, uh, podcasting platforms at Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Audible. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set Box Puppy Box Cup Box Something or Other and Windjum W Y N D G E M on Twitch. Where we're currently playing Out of the Abyss. And then occasionally I'll stream Final Fantasy XIV. Cool. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. Ed, as our illustrious returning guest, if folks want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? Uh, you can find me on um, Instagram as unicub underscore sex brain wizard. Um, you can find me on tic- the Tickety Talks as unicub79. Um, and you can find me on uh, the Twitters um, as either um, Eddie H. Cook or if you want that. Um, NSFW content. That's Jeep Daddy 3, but just let me know who you are. I don't need clients or family members seeing that stuff. That's fair enough. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night. Hasta la pasta. Ciao for now. <laughs>